where would we define? Where would you define the, the boundaries of what we you would consider to be sentient beings? What would be a sent an example of a sentient being, and what is not? Mm -hmm. um, in my view, uh, sentience comes from the brain's ability to resonate with the universe, where quantum holograms are being created by all sent other sentient entities in the universe and most probably the creative intelligence or the cosmic intelligence who apparently has made a universe that's very easy for the cosmic intelligence to penetrate and use to penetrate into our space-time reality. That seems to be very craftily embedded into our universe and that is a central process or a central purpose of black holes. Black holes probably represent an entry point for cosmic intelligence into the affairs of our universe. Now, isn't it interesting that our civilization has always believed that something like this must be true? Because look what we have known for the last 100 or 200 years. We have known that Light does not move all that fast. I mean, yes, it goes at um, uh, 3 times 10 to the 9 centimeters per second. We know all that. But when you think about it, we have always prayed in church throughout our civilization. Many different, uh, uh, many different religions have had a concept of prayer, and meditative trance, and, and meditative contact with the universe. And yet, when you think about it, if our meditations transfer into the universe as something moving at the speed of light, well, in a human lifetime of 60 years, they could not get past 60 light years. That's the definition of a light year. And, you know, a volume of space that's a diameter of 60 light years only has about 100 stars. And so, um, how could this meditation really be processed by the universe as a whole if it only goes to the nearest hundred or so stars. In a sense, we've always known that consciousness travels, and we've used that in our worship, travels much faster than the speed of light, it transfers at the speed of what Einstein called spooky action at a distance, or perhaps infinite speed, and it has been measured to be much faster than the speed of light, a good 10,000 times at least. And so, that has been built into our uh, understanding and appreciation of prayer uh, long, long in our civilization. And yet, when you think about it, at the speed of light, how could it do anything practical or useful? So we've always seemed to have known this. Yet for some reason, science, Western science, maybe, maybe it's, this is a recent phenomenon, has been trying to get people away from that innate sense that they already know about themselves. They try to tell us these things are not true that it's either their way or the highway. Uh, correct, and uh, we've come to accept that no information can transfer at faster than the speed of light. That is, we've said, uh, we've taught graduate students for a generation um, that not only can particles and photons, that is, light itself, not travel than the speed of light, but any information whatsoever. This was taught to me in graduate school by Nobel Prize winner Chandra Sekhar. And we are having second thoughts about that now. It seems that um, we have too much evidence that information about quantum states of particles that are conjoined uh, through direct interaction in a collision process, that those particles can be separated to large distances like uh, 60 miles and information about one's physical quantum state transferred to the other instantaneously, or nearly so. So we've had to get over this idea that thought and quantum processes cannot transfer faster than the speed of light. Um, back to the MECO. Do, do we see ex uh, um, reduced examples, potentially, of the MECO that has shown up in, in uh, and culture, my mind goes to the idea of um, a witch with a, uh, a crystal ball. 
Oh, my goodness. So are we seeing with a crystal ball, I mean, if you think of what a crystal ball may be, in some way the, 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 the witch may be resonating with, mine may be resonating with this, this object, which represents something, and you wonder if he's, you know, um, if he's trying to look into the future, if he's kind of resonating with all that is, as mm -hmm. represented by the crystal ball slash Miko. Very good. Um, in a way, I wish you had talked about a real crystal, like a quartz crystal, sure, rather than a crystal there. ball, because a crystal ball, remember, is um, a fluid state of matter, uh, glass being fluid-like. Um, things like quartz in their crystalline state have regular lattice work. Mm -hmm. And we've learned from Native Americans, actually, that these real crystals actually support and resonate with conscious states of the universe. By conscious states, I mean these helical resonances which are, have the shapes and the properties of our brain waves. And so I believe that a real crystal structure is more powerful in resonating with the universal hologram field that uh, relates to our consciousness than a glass crystal. Now, that's almost sidestepping the question you asked me. And uh, to then get to the original question of yours, which is, to what extent is a wizardly or attuned person learning something about the universe physically by uh, mentally contacting such a crystalline structure? Um, you talked about a glass crystal, and I, I changed that to a crystalline crystal. Um, the answer is almost certainly yes. Almost certainly, um, any such object in the universe has resonance with the quantum hologram patterns of the universe, and almost certainly that resonates with the mind of a nearby person, and so it makes perfect sense that there is some meaning to gazing into crystal structures. And so that same, that same person is sitting across from you is reading your future, past, circumstances, whatever, and within and use, using that mentally, in a sense, is moving around. I would say is tuning into your eternal being, and from that is able to recall some of your memories, and is able to perhaps recall or project or learn some of the potentials of your future. And this need not be so surprising after all. In other words, we know that when people talk about telepathy, they do it without the intermediary of a crystal ball. Some people tune into one another directly in telepathy, and I could imagine that the crystal is merely assisting that process.